good GPA, like 9.5. Like, what was the GPA in your first semester? Uh, yeah. yeah, so uh, oh, getting computer science is very, very competitive. Uh, my GPA was uh, 9.94, and that Fuck. is actually the cut off. Fuck! Fuck! <laughs> she is 9.94. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Got, like, bond name or something, right? I mean, yeah, that was uh, a nine, a nine in chemistry lab and a ten in everything else. <laughs> Damn, man. <laughs>
and there were a good number of uh, seniors who were able to guide us as well based on their own interest and their own paths that they took um so yeah that it was it was very very informative there's a lot of things happening and it was just it wasn't just a cadets academics uh so yeah that was first semester it was just a bunch of orientations volunteering for a bunch of things i basically volunteered uh, in, in like three four places uh, probably a little more than the average i was extremely enthusiastic uh, uh in my first semester uh, and yeah the, along with that branch change so there is a it is a very very hectic and a very very draining semester uh my second semester was a lot more chill it was uh, like i i had finished off with all my volunteering work i had got my branches i got in the branch i wanted so at that point it was my focus is starting to be on like learning and just chilling like hanging out with friends and what not so yeah that was also fun in its own way uh, and that's probably how college life is supposed to be <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, but then covid hit and we both know what happened <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. And how did your coding journey start? I mean, in eleven, you started coding in first year itself. Like, I mean, we had a background in eleven to twelve in computer science. But then, like, how did we? How did you go about in college? Like, how did how was first year when it comes to coding in general? Oh, uh, I mean, first year it was fine. So in our uh, in in our Uh, in electrical engineering alone uh, like every department has some sort of intro to programming course but in electrical engineering alone they basically said uh, if you already done coding in 11th to 12th you can take an advanced programming course uh, which i did take and that was actually pretty intense so uh, yeah 11th, 11th like having the foundation from 11th to 12th is really helpful i i also did enjoy 11th to 12th so like uh, so i was pretty attentive i retained a lot of knowledge from there yeah, yeah, yeah. um uh yeah so because of that uh that, that course was very, very very helpful but it was very very intense as well uh, did not see that coming uh after that it was actually kind of uh, peaceful in cs actually uh, it's it's just a misnomer because cs isn't it per se i mean for for a large part of time besides besides the two dsa courses yeah. uh, we don't really uh, code uh, we don't really code as much as people would think it's it's a lot of theory a lot of math and what not so mm-hmm. so it was fairly peaceful yeah. in fact semester three courses were fairly easy because they were they were basically a repeat of what we did in 11th and 12th at least mm-hmm. half the course was so mm-hmm. so that was pretty smooth sailing but after yeah. that it gets pretty intense uh, mm-hmm. and yeah you would need to have a passion in uh, passion for coding to be able to do the classes but i guess one good thing about being in cs is you don't really need to step out of your way that much to be able to learn about coding and good coding practices and what not like you'll get exposed to those in classes and so as long as you're pretty attentive or uh, like uh, uh, like you they take take them seriously it you you'll be fine yeah yeah but then like did you do any extra coding like you like go out of your way to like learn web development or app development or something of that sort like to like improve your skills mm-hmm. or some sort Uh, not really uh, so i yeah i did i did want to i did stuff outside my academics obviously but uh, uh, i don't know i i guess uh, my focus is more on like becoming a more well rounded person so mm-hmm. i had quite a few uh, eccentric activities but none of them were exactly technical related yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah uh, i basically had like three different winter internships yeah. <laughs> uh, every winter i just take an internship uh, yeah. through like due to any some weird circumstances so my first winter i worked at a nonprofit uh, i i interned at a nonprofit uh, setting up the uh, crowdfunding campaign mm-hmm. uh, my second winter i was working at isb uh, mm-hmm. in politi- uh, like uh, like they doing data scraping for political finance so that had a little technical stuff but it was also more like uh, it, like i was kind of trying to like feel my way around other non technical stuff mm-hmm. uh, and also in the uh, But like volunteering questions or questions of responsibility, I took up on campus. Right. Uh, they weren't really within within the tech domain, uh, but rather in the non-tech domain. So I was trying to explore different things along yeah. and just taking my courses seriously, and yeah, that was yeah. more than enough. Wow, that that's perfect. I think and after that, you got an internship at Octoboard. When that's like the biggest yeah. HFT thing out there. I mean, the one cloud package that that's that that thing, right? I mean, Octoboard does mm-hmm. pay you really well. So I mean, for that you must have studied really hard in the second year. You must have done done computer coding or you could must have prepared yourself for the DSA level. So how did how was that process like? How did you go there? Uh, so after uh, uh, 
first of all i wasn't really planning on it because that was the first time they came to campus uh yeah i didn't really expect it uh did i mean in terms of preparation yeah like i said I, we didn't know that they were coming to campus so there wasn't any kind of specific preparation that we could have done for it uh, until like a month before interns um their focus was more or uh, it was actually they they uh eric process a little more holistic in the sense that their focus was less on cp or your your lead coding skills but more on uh, the way you think your your uh, system design ability uh, how clean your code is how how well written your code is so uh, they like uh, they had a test but also they went through the answers to understand how, like how we were writing code it they, they weren't looking for hacky solutions uh, so yeah it was like a more, very well rounded process uh, so i uh, i feel that, that kind of suited me well because i my strengths lay in like my course fundamentals and my tsa fundamentals rather than uh, leap coding or cp so uh, like uh, so because they were looking at the way uh, our fundamental design design thinking was and our, uh, how uh, how like uh, well our coding skills were in in like a developmental sense rather than in, in a computer programming sense uh, that kind of helped me out a lot oh wow can you can you just walk us through your interview process of october like how was the first round like what is the point on if you remember the questions you will be great for the audience if it was in second year of the you will be really good uh so yeah uh so basically we had uh two tests and two interviews uh the three interviews with hr of course uh so the first test was just a basic aptitude test it was common for trading and tech uh for both the trading and tech profiles uh uh fairly simple it was just quick math quick more or less some memory games yeah. and whatnot yeah. and a psychometric analysis uh, yeah. the second one was a coding coding uh test uh, uh, so fairly run of the mill like two lead code questions and then a third question which is a little more design thinking rather than lead mm-hmm. code as in like building a class and whatnot uh, mm-hmm. and doing that in a smart and uh yeah. easily understandable way okay. um and then to do it like there was a hr interview which was an actual hr interview it wasn't just okay. a green flag kind of thing okay uh, so they uh, they they had a strong focus on culture fit uh, uh-huh. and they wanted to make sure that you are a good culture fit uh, and then the two tech interviews i don't want to give too much away uh, for the company's sake uh, but yeah it was again it it, it was less uh, yeah, less coding intensive or less dsa intensive but rather more system design uh, like design thinking intensive like again there, there wasn't a lot dealing with any sort of tech stack but rather they just wanted to understand how you look, analyze a problem and solve it from first principles mm. so that so that's what their focus was on for mm. so was it like uh, the standard problem that you need designing a parking parking lot or design some pl- having a class and then like working your way around that or was it like they gave some out of the box problem and then you had to like think of it what was it mean? uh it was <laughs> fairly uh, okay um yeah it was a little out of the box uh, it was it was a little out of the box like uh, it, it was kind of questions like if you would design this how like what are the things you would be worried about or what are the things you try to take care of uh, that kind of questions uh, mm-hmm. so yeah again they they wanted you to be able to uh, look at the problem and kind of see what what things you are able to come up with what things you are able to analyze and how you would think about something rather than how would you actually solve so because there was no real right answer to any other questions it was just mm-hmm. about uh, them trying to analyze your thought process all right all right got it and and after that you got an internship and how was it third year like what did you do after the getting internship did you, because most people after getting internship they just start chilling out and then it's party and uh-huh. we'll get a few and then maybe so sort of, right? like, what was your third year was like what do you do in Yeah, so I my third year, uh, yeah, I, we got our internship one month into like uh, my fifth okay. semester. So yeah, I basically was sent uh, for the entire year. Uh, uh, it was actually pretty academically rigorous. Uh, so I mean, the second year was fairly light. Uh, the the algorithm course was a little tough, but otherwise it was fairly lightweight. Uh, but the third year was like really really tough because that's when electives started coming in, and also the major CS courses, operating system, compiler design, and whatnot, and they're pretty tough. Uh, So yeah, it was just uh, pretty much more or less uh, hanging on to academics, and yeah. also uh, in our sixth semester we came back to campus. Yeah. So we came back to campus around March, I guess. I, I don't know. I, the end of February, if I'm not yeah. wrong. Uh, so yeah, we were just spending a lot of time with friends, having a lot yeah. of fun and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
And after, how was your internship process? Like, you actually went to Netherlands. Right? I mean, where did you go? Like, how was yeah. the process? Like, what, what did you do in the company? What was your process? Oh, so, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it was fun. I, we had two weeks of, like, a two-week training program. Uh, so some finance fundamentals as well as tech fundamentals uh, so so that we have a good idea of what the company does as well as uh, like the basic tech stack idea. And then we were given a projects. Uh, they, they had already asked us our preferences beforehand, like what kind of areas you want to work in. And based on that and, uh, and our performances as well, they kind of uh, allocated us into teams pretty well, I'd say, because my team was a perfect fit for me. Uh, yeah, and then it was, it was like uh, around six weeks uh, on our project. Uh, uh, and yeah, it was it, it was pretty amazing. It was pretty amazing going there and working. And we were also uh, it was a group of like twenty something people from Madras, Bombay, and Kanpur. So some of us knew each other, some of us didn't. It was it was an amazing interacting experience. We were all living together. Oh yeah, it, it was yeah, yeah, it was really, yeah. It was really yeah. so I think they, they just hired from the top IITs and then they like even if you're not from there, and you're even in computer science and then even the top IITs because like. So, there's a friend of mine from Bombay. He was, he was a mechanical in Bombay and he didn't get through. So he was like, okay, they want only CS guys in Bombay. Yeah. Oh, I mean, not really. Uh, I, I, there, was, there was a mechanical guy from Madras. Okay. So, oh, I mean, okay. they, were, they were open. They, they were open. And, and uh, on the trading side, there was quite a lot of diversity uh, in terms of the interns that they got. Okay. So, what tech stack did you work on? I mean, like, what exactly what exactly do HFTs do and like, what were you doing in that? Because the package that they give you is huge, and so the impact might be huge as well. Uh, so uh, I mean, it's kind of tough to uh, put what we do there. Because uh, I, uh, it, it is a fairly big company, and there the, the, there there are very diverse roles. So the thing is, what a lot of people think when it comes to HFT or a market maker, to be precise, whoever is a market maker. Uh, is that uh, all the software engineers, all of, all of what they're working on is just optimization, optimization, optimization. You're working on low-level code and just trying to make systems faster. Then that's actually not the case. They like they have a full-fledged tech stack, uh, uh, working at uh, uh, in uh, like uh, 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 like an HFT or a market maker like this. Uh, you can get a really fast exposure to a wide tech stack uh, because uh, yeah and. Yeah, so there's there's a lot of different roles that you can take in. Uh, it's it's not just working. I mean, if low level optimization is what is for you, there's there's quite a lot of opportunity there. But there's also a lot of other things that they do in terms of FPGA, in terms of data analysis, uh, in terms of UI UX. So yeah, there's there's a wide variety of roles. It's it's not like all the software engineers are just working on one thing. Uh, of course, we're all working towards a common goal, but uh, there, there are very very different things that is involved in that. Um, and so yeah. Yeah. So, like, what what exactly were you working on? You can elaborate on what were you uh, So, mine was uh, yeah. So, mine was more on uh, data analysis. So, yeah. I was working on uh, yeah, I was basically working on uh, analyzing the data we was getting from the systems and trying to uh, understand places like uh, places in the uh, resource man resource allocation where we can improve things. It's mm -hmm. fairly high level. Uh, it's fairly high level and also was able to get a broad overview of how the uh, tech stack actually works. So that, that, was yeah. really, that was really interesting. Yeah. So it was like, you use, what do you use for the data? Is Python or like, you use any other? Like, yeah, I uh, Python, Python. Okay, okay. So that's, it's pretty cool. And yeah. people have this general misconception about IIT. Like people think that all the people get packages like you do, but everybody gets into October or, you know, Jane Street or Google, but then like, how is the placements in IIT in general? How did you find it this year, considering that there's a recession and all that? Um, yeah, I, I guess it dropped a bit this year. I mean, it was it was a little tougher. Uh, uh, the numbers, uh, I guess the numbers aren't that much different, but it was a little tougher for the students. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, in terms of packages, uh, obviously not everyone's getting a Plus package, and I, I guess uh, I mean it's it's fairly common knowledge at this point that even the Plus packages aren't really <laughs> that fat of a package once you convert it to euros or dollars or whatnot, yeah, and yeah. also take taxes of those countries. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean people, I, it, it's just the case that people who are fairly uh, like hardworking in their own department or or whatever like whatever role they're pursuing for, if they if they've done like well enough, if they put in sincere effort, uh, then uh, sincere effort into prepping for that, 
there are enough opportunities in an IIT. I guess that's kind of what the difference is. There, there are enough opportunities to get a job or, or get yeah. into higher studies or whatnot in an IIT. So I, I guess that's kind of what the difference is. Mm. Wow, that makes a lot of sense. Can you elaborate on the competition in IIT? Like, let's say, like getting an internship or getting a placement. How competitive was it? Like, how how long were you preparing for for this? And do people really? Is it like a JE preparation part two for getting into a good company? What what is the mentality of students in general? Uh, I mean, so uh, like when you come into an IIT, unlike. During JE prep, when you come into an IIT, we don't we're not really a homogeneous body. So people have different uh, ideas as to how to go about this, uh, and also different people have different priorities, like the amount of time they're going to spend on this and uh, on academics, on career, and uh, on other things in their life. Uh, and also when you're applying when you're uh, applying to different roles, they would have different intensities in terms mm-hmm. of uh, academics, outside academics, and completely extracurricular activities, like a consulting role. Would require a lot of focus on extracurricular activities, whereas mm-hmm. uh, for the softer roles, a lot of people, especially not from uh, circuit branches, would have to put in effort outside that curriculum, but still academic, fairly academic. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, it differs from person to person. So everyone's coming from a different place with different CGs. So there's yeah. uh, there's no one linear style. So yeah, yeah. yeah, there are people who do take it like take a J style, just read code all day, and yeah. then there are people who uh, work on fundamentals, or and there are people who yeah, and, and the amount of time you put in depends on your life choices, basically, at that point, what, what yeah. matters to you. So in, in my case, it was just uh, me kind of uh, focusing on my fundamentals. So I, I felt uh, it just helped quite a long way during my intern season that uh, I did well in my class, in, in my data structures and algorithms class. Uh, uh, and yeah, even even though my deep coding uh, practice wasn't as much as what the others had done, uh, because I had the fundamental set that that took me a long way, basically. Wow. Okay, that's perfect. I mean, because generally the thought process like okay, if I do more questions, I'll be able to know solve more problems. So I'll be able. To yeah, it's not as linear as that. So I think fundamentals matter, and of course, lead code and all matters. Yeah. Well. yeah. Did you like how much did you practice for lead code? Like, did you solve a lot of problems, or like how many? Just can give a rough idea of what you solved and like how you went about the same job. Um. Uh, I, to be honest, not enough. <laughs> uh, not not enough. Uh, yeah, I was like I said, my fundamentals are strong, and that carried me a long way. Uh, yeah. code, I was in touch, but uh, not as much as I would have. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> There's yeah. always room for improvement. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. So I mean, that's pretty cool, man. Because I was thinking that you know, like the only competitive coders who have like. Massive profiles in code chef and code will be able to get there, but then it, that's not the case. Right? Like, really, that's not the case. And how was the PPO conversion at Opera World? Like, you did an internship, and then how many people were a PPO, and how many people were not? So uh, I guess I guess it's uh, it wasn't a fixed number. It's not a fixed number year over year. So they they were very clear to us that uh, they they were very like ready and willing to hire. So it was uh, there was it was not competitive. Uh, like I said, it, especially in software. Uh, I mean, in both roles, uh, we, we were all assigned to different projects. So there was no link, there was no chance of being able to pit one person against the other. We were all working on different things, and uh, so each person's great, like score, like scoring or grading or whatever you want to call it, was individual. And, and they were very clear that as in uh, they were willing and ready to hire even every single person if yeah. we were considered uh, a good fit for the company. Yeah. Uh, so it it wasn't a matter of the number, it was just a matter yeah. of our performance and our culture fit. Okay. Yeah. That that makes a lot of sense. And how would how was the culture in Opera World? How how did you fit in like oh. you were you were Indians going abroad and you must have found it how how was it in general? Oh yeah, and the, the culture at Optimal is just am- amazing. It was it was amazing. So uh, yeah, people were uh, so yeah. Like I said, we were like twenty uh, guys from uh, different three different IITs going there. So and, and we all knew a few of the other people. So there wasn't much in terms of being completely lonely. We were all in a common housing. So uh, we were having fun together. Uh, yeah. And because it was two months, we didn't really see the time fly. Yeah. Um, uh, 
the culture of Optiver is like really, really nice. They were mm-hmm. they were very friendly, very helpful. It it was a very collaborative environment. Very open. Uh, mm-hmm. Like the, a lot of information was open, uh, and they were very transparent with us. Uh, so yeah, that was really amazing. Uh, they helped us settle in really well. They made sure that we were taken care of well. And, and yeah, just having a collaborative environment there was like really, really helpful. Uh, helped us settle in well. Uh, the hierarchy is not strictly followed. So like people even at the lowest rung can basically make suggestions. Like my role was analyzing data, like building building a tool for that, and then making suggestions to people. easily much higher levels above me so yeah yeah <laughs> uh, th- th- uh, they, they were totally fine with that they were totally okay with that uh, yeah ev- everyone's basically asked to take up ownership uh, for their work uh, for their work so yeah that was that was really amazing so people took up responsibility and also uh, it was in the netherlands and one thing that the dutch care about a lot is time management so they want to be on time at all times and the, i i feel i mean Personally, I felt that was amazing. Uh, I kind of took picked up that habit from them, and uh, so being on time like matters to me a lot right now. Uh, and yeah, just working practices too were like pretty amazing. I guess that's probably not uh, exclusive to a company. It's just going into a corporate environment, like seeing compared to how we uh, code like had in an ad hoc manner in college, like having proper version control and documentation and whatnot. The, the extent to which they do it and testing. the the extent that the thoroughness with which they do it is like pretty amazing and to be able to see the benefits of that it, it was really amazing wow that that sounds really really cool i mean yeah so so then you'll be joining netherlands office right i mean you'll be going to netherlands obviously last year yeah yeah I'll, i'll yeah i'll i'll be returning to the netherlands wow all the best to you man and do you have any suggestions for the audience who want to work in hr tech or so like big tech companies or anything like that what would you like to do? i uh, there, there's no one right way of going about it but i would i would just say be very strong in your dsa fundamentals and just keep in the habit of coding uh, yeah the fundamentals matter more than you think more like uh, yeah that just don't forget that uh, at the expense right. of late coding yeah that's i think that and, you should go in practice good coding yeah. coding practices just not uh, Like l- learn how to do CPU, but also learn how to code for uh, developmental situation. Hmm, Just clean code, clean code. I think that would help a lot of people, man. And just last question, which would, what do you do? You plan on doing masters or higher studies, or like what's? Do you are interested in education? What do you think about it? higher studies or masters? Uh, is it necessary? Yeah. Uh, is is it necessary? Is a different question, uh, as in the sense that. Uh, I I don't know. Perhaps I'm uh, not yet experienced enough to answer that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, computer science of all areas is places where uh, the degree matters the least. So uh, a master's would probably not be necessary for uh, most non-research role. Uh, am I considering it? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at my options at the moment. I I love the company culture. I didn't. Uh, so once I got in return offer, I didn't want to leave it. Uh, I want to be. I I feel I can learn a lot there. Yeah. Uh, that's. The place I'm going to have the greatest learning opportunity at this moment, so I'm going to go there. And then, uh, depending on my interest, let's see where life takes us. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. Thank you, Hari. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, thank you so much. Yes, let me just.